Hey, welcome back, gamers. Hope you've been having a wonderful week so far. The weekend is coming up. Friday evening is finally here. We're going to be getting ready to do a big farm raid with the Discord group tonight. So I wanted to show you what do we do to prepare for that type of stuff. Well, it's pretty simple. You're going to need to make sure that you have all of the basics. And I'm going to show you exactly where to get those basics that you're going to need for all of your PvP and PvE needs. So one of the things you're going to need, you're going to need a lot of cannonballs. You're going to need a lot of cannonball making materials. And you're going to need a ton of food. So where do you get that? Well, the one-stop shop for all of those items is going to be to come over to the sunken gold mine. You want to come in here. And then you're also going to want to make sure that you hit all these shipwrecks over in this vicinity as well. I mean, there is just a ton of them. And then there's a lot of NISD up through here. As you can see, there's shipwrecks piled all through this area so that's what one of the things we're going to work on right now getting this situated and i want to do a, an updated review of the game because it's been see what february when this came out so it's now almost middle of april so yeah uh, the game's been hitting pretty good uh we did the pass for those who don't know what we're talking about with the pass let's bring that up for you so Smuggler's Pass that came out, the Smuggler's Pass is free for anyone who owns the game. Of course, then there's the Premium Edition, which gives you some extra cosmetics that you may or may not care about using. I find that the cosmetics that you open up from the world bosses that are released are way better. So I'd save your money on that. Maybe you can save it, put it on the store and buy an actual cosmetic piece you really like. So that's going to be up to you to decide. But you got to run through these tiers. So you have quartermasters, gunmasters, and shipmasters. And this is where you're going to open up not just cosmetics and not just gold and uh, the pieces of eight and things like that. But you're going to get different types of ships. So that's where we ended up getting the armor for our ship. We ended up getting uh, our Lepontent schematics. And we ended up getting uh, you know, just a lot of really good uh, weapons and things like that out of this. So it was pretty cool for that aspect. So definitely worth getting on that is... The gameplay, is it holding up to what we were hoping? That's the big question. And while I will say that the gameplay of what they've done in the base game is amazing, uh, most of us who play Skull and Bones, we have reached a point now where we're hoping to see more content come out. Now, what kind of content are we discussing? Well, I'm hoping to see that Northern Boundary open up. You know, I, I know that they're talking about the major game uh, updates that are going to be coming in seasons three and four and then of course we have fleet management coming in season two as well so that's going to be a really good thing to have in the game and let me tell you we're, we're definitely anticipating it as our uh, daily grind has become just one of those things where looks like somebody has already harvested here not a big deal but the daily grind in this game has become where it's mostly about silver and mostly about the uh, zoom in, see the shipwrecks here. There we go. About pieces of eight. So right now we're been gathering pieces of eight. You know, I, I personally I haven't really focused too much on the eights as of right now. Uh, the reason for that is, I mean, I'm sitting at almost one million eights so uh, right now i'm focusing on getting my silver saved up we've got just under four thousand of the sovereigns left after spending that you earn sovereigns by gathering pieces of eight so it's definitely worth doing that to get those sovereigns because there's going to be a lot of different types of weapons armor things like that to open up as the game progresses so with this being a live update game expect to be seeing things like that coming in i think season one is kind of a testing ground some see where everybody's at how long it's taking people to pass through the passes and stuff so definitely definitely don't give up on the game if it seems like the grind is is kind of uh getting to you my recommendation is add it add a new game to the content of what you play now what kind of new game well that's totally up to you so we've been playing some optional games that uh, i think are pretty good they're rpg based and stuff but I always find myself coming back to Skull and Bones because it is a good game. It's a great game. For those of you who ever played the Black Flag, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, that to me was one of the best games that I've seen Ubisoft come up with in years. Now, I do love the Assassin's Creed storyline, but I love the ship 
the ship play in that and that's one of the cool things about this game is you can play with friends uh, you can play with random people if you want to and you can even play against friends in friendly setups or in PvP against just any stranger that you come across so there's a lot of great options in this uh, skull and bone package for people that are just coming into the game and I would say as of right now it sounds like they did a 33% off spring sale uh, Ubisoft is so that should be something if you're interested in the game now would be the time to look into getting it now I know that there's a lot of channels out there who say that the game flopped right when it came out that's not true in any sense of this of, of gameplay man uh, and I want to show you on here real quick so we can come into our stuff so we just joined into the game this world has 17 people in it which is the pretty typical of what you're going to find it will hold up to 20 usually it leaves a few uh, spots in there so you can bring friends over into the servers that you're in as well so uh, I've not had a problem where I've come in and found an empty server I've never had any issues finding people to play with or even against for that matter maybe you're more of a PvP person well we do have that that deal where you can raise a PvP flag meaning that you're open to fight anything and everything that comes along even other players and if that's what you're into then when you first log into the game if you're not in a PvP server it's because when you left your flag was down so you want to raise that PvP flag back out of the server you're in rejoin is going to put you into a server where all the PvP players are gathering. So that's something that they've done. So you can find each other for the PvP aspect of the game. Which is really, I think, uh, a pretty good idea that they've come up with on that. Ah, oh, we missed the NISD. It's okay. We're going to swing this direction anyway. But yeah, so uh, I've thoroughly been enjoying the game from the customization of the ships and stuff. I mean, uh, we have, what is it, 11, I think 11 ships, 10, 11 ships now, types to choose from. So we haven't been doing much with those small ship builds since we got into the mediums, obviously. But there is going to be a lot of reasoning for bringing those ships up later when they start releasing that you can upgrade your hull types and even your weapon types sloops are going to be a big advantage if you're in a large team because they're so maneuverable so fast and with a large group of sloops you could take out a large ship very easily so uh, i think that that's going to be some things that we're going to see them build upon what the base game already has and then when we start looking at fleet management i expect that fleet management is where we're going to end up finding the uh we're going to end up finding a lot of the more intricate details of ship builds. Uh, maybe I would love to be able to see some, some weapon upgrades, but I expect what's going to end up happening is that's going to add a way to potentially collect the 8s on the automatic system, which sounded like when they had the deck, which has been about a month ago now, when they had that last, that last uh, deck video out, which is Ubisoft devs talking about having an automatic pickup system that would be risky so I guess that's going to open up to a PvP aspect but it's not so much the fleet management stuff that a lot of us are looking for we're looking for how do we manage our ships once we are have started building our fleets other than just changing out some of the armor and things like that and I think that we're going to end up finding a uh, some content here around the beginning of season two is when I expect it to hit I don't imagine they're going to be releasing a whole lot of that stuff in the first season. They did give us a little bit of stuff, you know, the PvP flags. They gave us that in season one, mainly because people were asking for PvP. And once it hit, people were like, well, I can't find PvP. Well, if you're like me and you're coming into this server and your flag was down because you're focusing on world bosses and stuff, uh, you're probably not going to join into a PvP server right away. But if you will put your flag up, back out, come back in, you're going to be more apt to find people who will run PvP with you. And the more you run it, the higher your sh uh, your stats get for shootdowns and sinking other people. You're going to come into a situation where you will uh, undoubtedly be able to find the right type of people to match up with, whether it's teaming up with them or playing against somebody. So right now I am still I'm collecting pretty much anything and everything that I can here. Now a lot of the stuff that I'm pulling, you're noticing I'm pulling everything. Well, I'm not going to make two passes up through here. 
We're going to travel down. We're going to farm all this up. And then we're going to dump at a location. And then I'm going to head up north as well because I want to make sure that I'm getting one stuff to build my enhanced repair kit ones. But I also want to make sure that we're going to have enough stuff to make our cannonball. So we're just stripping everything. This battle bark build, I, I am loving it. Uh, it's, it's to me one of the easiest ships to just kind of do all aspects of the game. It works really good in PvP as well. Okay, let's drop a mortar here and fire a few bombards, maybe. There we go. <coughs> But yeah, so this is what I do before a big farming event in the evening. I want to come through and make sure I'm going to have plenty of cannonballs. I want to make sure I have plenty of repair kits as well. Because when we come out and we go against things, I actually I use this. I'll throw some uh, Mons Mag 3 on the bow of it and uh, use that to help with forts and stuff. We like to go in. We run forts, which is going to give you those helm materials if you grab those contracts, which is always the smart way to do it. Don't just go and hit the forts with your team. Make sure that you're carrying as many helm contracts as you can for that fort so you can go ahead and get the benefit of the payouts of the materials. And then from there you can do your rovering mission which would be where you would go to drop off the skull rum and stuff like that. And you want to make sure that you farm anything and everything in the vicinity. That way you can get that helm material that way as well. And this ship is going to hang in there with you regardless of how you decide or what you decide to do. You may decide, hey, let's throw in some PvP. That's great. Uh, you know, if you're playing with a team, you can even throw a mortar, a healing mortar on the, uh, the center deck for your auxiliary port. And you have a way to heal your teammates. And that's typically what I'll do is it's just a great way to heal your team while you're rolling with them. Plus, you have that base stats heal that's going to heal the ships in the vicinity as well that's part of your team. So... A lot of really good avenues there so like i say man it's just a, a great all-around build so let's take and dump our cargo and i want to show you this next location that i like to go to and uh, i notice i obviously people are figuring these locations out here because i'm noticing when i come through that there's just not quite as much of the materials available because people are harvesting it so that means that people are figuring it out that's good i like to uh, see where people are learning about the game whether it's from watching our videos or watching videos somewhere else or you just taking the time to you know explore the map that is what's going to make this game a success not a great launch a lot of people realize that it wasn't a very good launch for this game it was highly anticipated by a lot of us i think they ended up with right at a million people at launch no idea to track exactly where they're at now within the system uh, because they don't have this game over on Steam or anything like that where it can be tracked. We just get reports from Ubisoft, but like I say, I'm not seeing where it's dropped any, any player base that I can tell. I've not noticed anything as far as, you know, it's getting harder to find people to play with. The, sh the, the servers are always full of players, so that's always a great thing to see. And that's something you want to watch for. Plus, there's new content rolling out. Now, most of the content we're getting in Season 1 has been bosses. And that will continue through the next seasons as well. But keep in mind, there's going to be further expansions to the game as well. And that's what's going to keep this game in the long term interesting. Is they're going to add new aspects to it. You know, whether it's new sections of map. Like the northern section that is currently under shrouds. I believe that's going to end up opening up in Season 4 just from some of the hints that they drop out in that roadmap uh we did a couple videos of that and something i noticed too is like when they have ubisoft roadmap we'll put it up and report exactly what ubisoft is saying it's going to do and we actually get thumbs downs on those videos the reason i think we're getting the thumbs down on the videos is not what people want to hear but i can come in here and i can make up a bunch of stuff which a lot of channels do they just make up stuff like oh this is what we're expecting to see and then when it doesn't happen then they blame ubisoft rather than just admitting that they're lying to you, the viewer, to get you to go watch their, their trash video, giving you fake information. So, And that's that's one of the things in the gaming world. So I don't want to be that type of person. If they don't give us much updates, then, I mean, there's just not really anything to report on it. But there is always an aspect to come into this game and, and try to have fun. Now, uh, the reason I kind of come in and collect all my stuff by myself is just quicker for me to jump into a server, grab as much stuff as I can. And then uh, I will take and go from there. And then I'll find my teammates that will usually be 
gathering in another server typically by eh, three four o'clock in the afternoon people are starting to get off work and I noticed that we usually are able to jump straight into some really nice battles really good farming runs uh, I've been saving my contracts such as the Mangodens, uh, the Road Mangodens, and then uh, a lot of the other different types of contracts we have in here because we will usually come in and just do a big server farm event where we will hit and farm every single castle. So I'm hoping to do some level 14 and then that level 15 Mega Fort Ustin tonight. We had a few guys that took it, uh, it's been about a week ago. And I've not been able to get in on the Mega Fort Ustin yet. So that was, I think it was last weekend. I've been to a weekend before that, but you know, you get busy with things in life sometimes, so uh, it's going to be nice to be able to get in there and you know, jump in so I can say I've been part of it too. So, you don't want you don't want everybody to outdo you, you know, that's one of the things you don't want to get out, outgrown by your, your teammates. You want to make sure you're being competitive, and that's one of the things that we encourage within our group is while we do help you by giving you stuff, we are always going to encourage you to be earning it as well so one thing we we don't want is what they call the game groupies and that comes in all shapes sizes and you know categories or whatever where they just kind of want you to come and just give them stuff you know you come out and you farm but you're not farming for just you you're farming for everybody else instead of yourself so one of the things we've started to encourage people is that once a week we'll usually get these these big uh server farms going on and you're welcome to join us and if you choose not to join us i mean that's your choice but don't be surprised when people are less apt to just give you gear. They're going to want you to come out. They're going to want you to come out and farm it. Especially when you start looking at stuff like uh, sovereign cost or pieces of eight cost. Because once you reach that diamond rank, you don't really get a lot of sovereigns after that point. so that is how you do this and then what I will do is I'll swing back over into Africa I'm gonna hit the fast travels head back to Africa pick up as much food as I can make another loop and I'll come back up here pick up more materials and I typically make about three or four loops like that and that's going to give me enough to not just run for the evening but it's going to give me enough to keep me uh, keep my ship going and even help out some of the teammates as you go into situations you're not always going to have all of the materials you need especially if you use like sandbuck which I love the sandbuck but man that storage space can become an issue when you're running farms and you eat through cannonballs really quick with it as well well if that's anything with the demi cannons honestly but you go through the cannonballs real fast so you can't carry as many on there because of the cargo space it can balance out where if you're doing a lot of the uh, fleet patrols PV or PVE against you know the crowds that come in you know, you can use a lot of cannonballs and pick up some gear, but you're eventually going to reach a point where you're over-encumbered. So, this is one of the reasons I have switched over to the Battle Bark, but you lose out on that DPS that you get used to those Demi Cannons. But, hey, it, you got to sacrifice things sometimes when you build characters or ships in this case. And it's just been a fun time to just come in and just play with some of the ship designs. I've actually got a sloop design that I'm going to try tonight if it does really well tonight. Now, I don't expect a lot of, uh, a whole lot of room to be able to store cargo, obviously, with a sloop. But I'm expecting it if we can come in with some sloop designs, running a, a heavy group of sloops, we may end up having a pretty good time. We'll have to wait and see. If it works out, we'll definitely be posting a, bit, a video of those builds and even tactics. Y'all have a wonderful day, and we will talk to you later.